Okay, here we have Country Magazine. This is the February-March 2001 issue. On the back it says, The charm of fishing is it the pursuit of what is elusive but attainable, a perpetual series of occasions and hope by John Buchan. Okay. Now, you all like the Country Almanac, so I'm going to read that to you on page 18 here. February, March 2021. Welcome early spring with memories, cupcakes, and cuddly baby animals. February 7th, put on your pioneer hat and celebrate the birthday of Laura Ingalls Wilder by planning to visit Laura Ingalls Wilder Home and Museum in Mansfield, Missouri. Open for the season on March 1st. You can tour the home where she wrote much of her beloved Little House book series and see the artifacts and exhibits from her life. Ingles, Laura Ingalls Wilder Home.com. February 15th is President's Day. Make chocolate cherry cupcakes in honor of George Washington, his famous cherry tree, and cherry month. In a large bowl, you want to take one package of chocolate cake mix, one and one third cup water, a half a cup canola oil, and three large eggs. You're going to beat on low speed for 30 seconds and then beat on medium for two minutes. Spoon the batter by one fourth cupful into paper lined muffin cups. Using a 21 ounce cans of cherry pie filling, place a rounded teaspoon of pie filling in the center of each cupcake. Set the remaining pie filling aside. Bake at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. Now you're going to remove the pan to the wire racks to cool completely. Use a 16 ounce can of vanilla frosting to frost the cupcakes. Top each one with one cherry from the pie filling. Now garnish with chocolate curls if desired. Refrigerate remaining pie filling and it makes up to 24 servings. March 14th. It's daylight savings times. Ugh, I don't like it. We're going to spring forward by setting our clocks ahead one hour. So before you go to bed on March 13th, you want to spring your clocks an hour ahead. On March 20th, we finally welcome spring. Celebrate the first day of spring with a visit to the nearby animal farm or pet and zoo. Get up close and personal with fuzzy newborn late lambs, bunnies, piglets, calves, foals, and chicks to our sweet start to a new season. And on Instagram, I'm going to try and take a picture of this um, recipe so y'all can get the recipe. A lot of them have been saying lately that they liked for me to share the recipes over back to Instagram. But it was acting up the other day, so I don't know if it's still acting up or not. I haven't used it a whole lot lately. Okay, the next one I wanted to share with you was page 50, The Animal Tales, Catnap. A Persistent Feline is the Culprit When Things Go Bump in the Night by Barbara Waddell from Nicholsville, Kentucky. Sylvester inspects the Daily Mail. Isn't he cute? Okay. Arnie and I were jolted awake one night when something outside hit the screen on our bedroom window. I looked up and saw our 15-pound main moon cat spread eagle in the square of the moonlight hanging by his claws from the screen wire mesh. His eyes roamed from the dark bedroom as though he was looking to see if one of us would make a move to let him into the patio door. But climbing out of the bed at 1 a.m. to let him in, feed him and wait for him to eat and be let back out. When we had to get up at 5 a.m. had all the appeal of trek across the Sahara. What was that? Arnie asked, glancing at his watch. Sylvester, I whispered. It's only 1 a.m., he said. What's he doing home so early? Sylvester roams outside at night. What do he does out there, we have no idea. We assume that when he pr prowls the nearby fields and woods, he does whatever cats do when they roam at night, but he always returns home at 5, 5 a.m. to be let in and be fed. Why, why he turned up four hours early that this night, I have no clue. I sneaked in a peek at the window again. Sylvester was now gazing at the deck door as if I was trying to gauge how far he'd let drop if he let go of the screen. Don't move, I whispered to Arnie. Maybe he'll think we're not in here. Sylvester only howled. Oh, for the crying out loud. Arnie mumbled, climbing out of bed. I may as well. 
No, we need to be firm, I said, placing a hand on his chest. Sylvester is what is known as alfalfa male, and I read somewhere that alfalfa males should be given attention only when behaving themselves. When is he ever behaving himself, Arnie muttered. We lay there, rigid as rake handles. Arnie, I finally whispered, is he still there? What do you think, he answered, turning to look. He's stuck in the screen. Sylvester struggled a while, but finally managed to free himself and dropped to the deck door. I heard the pad over the patio door. When no one let him in, he soon came back to the bedroom window and peeped in. Suddenly, I couldn't hold it back any longer. I sat up and doubled it over in hysterics. What is so funny? Arnie asked. Do you realize we're hiding from our cat? I stammered between the convulsions of laughter. Arnie responded with a chuckle. The chuckle blossomed into a deep belly laugh. Soon he too was laughing hysterically. We kept laughing till our sides hurt and our neck muscles ached, even after my husband got out of bed and let Sylvester in. So I thought that was cute. thought I would share it with you. And we'll do a joke. What kind of cereal do snowmans eat? Frosted Flakes from Bradley Wesner, Simpsonville, South Carolina. And we'll do another one here. I always love their pictures. Look at these beautiful pictures. This one here kind of reminds me of Yellowstone. But that's taken in California. Ah, this is what I wanted to share with you. They've got a beautiful story about Valentine's Day. Traditions written in the snow. In a park like the one above in Indiana, Ron left a Valentine's Day message in the snow for Heidi. With no money to spare, my husband planned the perfect Valentine's Day surprise by Heidi Hendrickson from Pryol, Iowa. For Valentine's Day over the years, my sweet husband Ron has given me many cards, gifts, flowers, and special nights out to show his affections and celebrate our love. One gift touched my heart and remains my favorite until this very Valentine's Day. Ron and I were high school sweethearts and married after the year of, after graduation ready to start our lives together. We skipped college and headed out into the workforce. We were making minimum wage, so needless to say, we had no disposable income. As Valentine's Day approached, I didn't have any expectations for gifts, flowers, candy, or a night out. These would have been frivolous, and I didn't need them to know how much Ron loved me. That year, February 14th, happened to fall on a Tuesday, which was perfect. It was the day off, and we were going to spend it together. Ron knew how I loved to play in the snow, so he planned a day at the Waterworks Park in Des Moines, and it had been a brutal winter. But this day was a little warmer, and the sunshine welcomed us, inviting us out to play. So with everyone else off to work, we took off the sun's invitation and headed outside. The park was covered in newly fallen blanket of snow, the kind that leaves one surrounded by a gentle stillness. Ron seemed to know where he wanted to go. Be, where, while I was on, on my own little world, looking at nature's beauty all around, he parked the car and asked me to stay where he checked it to see if the gate was open. A clearing I loved was on the other side of the bridge, and it was an ideal place to make snow angels and put down tracks in the snow. Ron walked over the bridge and disappeared over the hill. I waited in the car, listening to music. A short time later, he returned with rosy red cheeks. He took my hand, and we walked in silence toward the bridge. On the other side of the bridge was an enormous heart in the snow with the following message. Heidi, I love you. Happy Valentine's Day, Ron. Ron had planned this grand gesture before we were even got to the park. Later, we noticed others had written messages along the one Ron had written to me. These were proof that this was the best Valentine's Day and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. We have since shared 35 Valentine's Days together. Some were filled with flowers, cards, or other gifts. All came with heartfelt expressions of love, but to this day, my favorite one was written in the snow. And that's page 60. And that is all I'm sharing from this wonderful magazine. I will probably do one more magazine, as it is, or not magazine, song tonight, as it is tradition for me to do four videos. I know last night I did not do four videos. Maybe that's what caused me not to have a good day today, some or somewhat of a good day. I don't know. But uh, take a deep seat. I'll find something and 
I'll sing for y'all.